Hey everybody, it's Chris Mini again. Check me out if you need any miniatures painted. And I'm back to talk more about Hawk War Games Drop Zone Commander. Um, this time, Shaltari Gates. So when you're getting into sh Drop Zone Commander, everyone remembers their first time where their opponent's talking about how their units can teleport all across the field and you look up and it's this guy and he's all they can say is Shaltari. So I just wanted to go over the gate rules real quick. Here we have a quick comparison. Um, the UCM Condor and Bear, the Scourge, Marauder, and Invader. And on the right here we have the Shaltari Eden and their Haven Terra Gate. Um, first, they use a little bit different tech terminology, but relatively the same. Instead of embarking, disembarking Shaltari, materialize and dematerialize through their gates. Um, the gate, the aerial gates still have to land and have their movement. All units and gates get a total of two materialization slash dematerializations per turn. Um, and Shaltari have a light, medium, and heavy gate to mirror the other faction's dropships as well as having the Haven Terra gate which is like their APC. Uh, get into the differences here uh, the gates do not are not bought for any unit they actually form their own battle group technically although it's best to think of this as a pool as it does not count towards the limit of battle groups a player can have and when a Shaltari player activates any battle group they can nominate any gates that are going to activate with the battle group and will act will move and effectively become their drop ships and APCs for the turn. This gives the Shaltari a great deal of flexibility as their gates are never tied to a particular unit unlike the other factions. All Shaltari units have mass values and or gate values. If they have a mass value then they may materialize and dematerialize through the gates as long as the mass value does not exceed the gate value. Units that are dematerialized are off the board completely as they're considered to be on a Sheltari spacecraft in orbit around the planet, so it is possible to strand units off the board by destroying all of the Sheltari gates. There are two types of mass, there's normal mass and fine mass. The larger gates, such as the Eden here, uh, they lack the precision to pick up small units such as infantry, whereas the Spirit Light Gate and the Haven Terra Gate are fine gates and they can pick up things that are considered fine mass which is normally infantry but it's also worth pointing out that the Shaltari Yari which is their fast scout skimmer has a fine mass value as well as a normal mass value so it could utilize any gate. In the beginning of the game a Shaltari player must declare which units are materialized and which are dematerialized. Always check the scenario to see if you're allowed to direct deploy or if they will start in readiness but anything that is dematerialized will have to enter play through a gate. Gates are never carrying their passengers, so if a gate's destroyed, there are no passengers to be harmed, but also there are no survivors left. Uh, here you can see that I'm gonna be showing a quick little example. The Tomahawk tanks and the Kukri there on the left will be part of the same battle group, and the Shaltari player is going to activate both of these Eden gates. Of course the normal restrictions apply so the gates could move half, the tanks could move half, uh, there's also the three inches that they get when they dematerialize. So it's a lot like your embark disembark, it's just that the gates again are not tied to this battle group. So here you can see the Kukri and the Tomahawks here have dematerialized and the Kukri, the two gates, and the Tomahawks all count as having one materialized slash dematerialize. So since the gates haven't moved, they can perform a half move or less. And now those Kukri could deploy out of the other gate and the Tomahawks could deploy out of this gate and effectively switch places. This was just a quick example I did to show how Shaltari can utilize their gates. 
getting back to the brass tacks of it. Um, another rule is that on the first turn, Shao Patari player must activate at least one gate with every battle group. It's for the sake of game balance, that way the Shaltari player can't just hang back with all their gates and let the other their opponent commit their forces since they lack the flexibility of the gates. Uh, aerial gates are surrounded by a charged atmosphere. This is a hazard to enemy aircraft, so if you get within four inches they can reaction fire. However, the Shaltari gate pilots are prudent and they may never end their move within four inches of an enemy aircraft. It's a rule to prevent them being used offensively. When a Shaltari unit with an objective dematerializes, the objective is transferred to the gate because the objective lacks the technology that's built into the Shaltari vehicles and war suits to be dematerialized. The gate can then transfer objectives to ground units by landing, but it cannot pick up an objective in any other way. So if a gate is excuse me, so if an objective is stranded, the Shaltari need a ground unit to pick it up. Lastly, Shaltari commanders do not count as having left the battlefield if they rematerialize the same turn that they have dematerialized. There are two rules in regards to gate in list construction. First, the combined total of gate value cannot exceed the total mass value of all other units in the army. Gates that also have a mass value like the Haven count towards both. Second, the number of gate squads does not exceed the total number of other squads in the army. So here I have a graphic I did quickly of a Eden medium gate moving 10 inches or less so that it could dematerialize the Haven Terra gate. The, it deploys 3 inches and gets its half move and as long as it's within an inch it can then dematerialize these braves directly into the building. Pretty similar to exactly what's going on with other factions. What really demonstrates the Sheltari's flexibility is that if the Braves then dematerialize out of the building, they count as having one dematerialized. The Haven could then go through the Eden Gate, but then the Haven is counted as two dematerialized. Now the Braves could say rematerialize into that building further back as there's a Haven Gate there, or if there was another Haven Gate that was dematerialized, the Eden could then move, dematerialize the second Haven Gate, and dematerialize the Braves again. So thank you again for watching. I know that was really fast, but I just wanted to jam pack all the information. Please read the article on my blog, chrismini.blogspot.com, uh, as I'm going to write it all out, of course. And tune back in next time. I'm going to cover more Drop Zone Commander. Thanks again for watching.